I have become increasingly interested in how frequently the media tells us that the planet is doomed and there's nothing we can do about it and we're not doing all the right things. Can I just say like growing up or maybe it's just like for the last 20 years, we have heard, I've heard this since I think maybe I was even like in college, that the Great Barrier Reef, right, is absolutely under siege, like sea turtles are dying. The Great Barrier Reef is dis being destroyed. When yes. you go scuba diving, you're seeing a whole reef system that's being destroyed. Nowhere in the world could you look to see the effects of climate change better than the Great Barrier Reef. Well, there are a few things that are sort of poster children for climate change is the Great Barrier Reef and polar bears, right? And we talked to you about recently how the polar bear population is actually thriving once again. Uh, the same is true according to new research about the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. So you would think, right, if good news comes out about the health of the reef, we would get that from news reports, but we're not. We will only get that from the media if it is doom and gloom. So we're gonna give you the opposite. So the Australian Institute of Marine Science has pu published information showing that coral reefs are at a 36 year high in Australia, yet they will not tell you how the average is up overall. So physicist Peter Ridd has studied the Great Barrier Reef since 1984. He said that this uh, Australian Institute of Marine Science, which I'm now gonna call Ames, so you know what I'm talking about. He says that Ames has effectively hidden the very good news about the reef between 2016 and 2022 by not publishing the Great Barrier Reef's average data. Why? So if you look at the report here, uh, Ames breaks down the data by reef, northern, central, and southern, and it shows how much of each destructive thing is happening, such as bleaching, which is when the reefs turn white, or this uh, crown thorn starfish outbreak. So how do they do this? This is kind of interesting. They actually tow a diver around the peripheral of the reefs, which is kind of a cool job, right? According to Rid, that's a super impressive feat because it means that over the last 30 years, Ames has now towed divers a distance roughly equivalent to the circumference of the world. And so the result is the most is a remarkable data set, right? So in years when the average reef was down, Ames said so when the average of the reefs overall so so to be clear they would report it like when oh the reef is declining in size we we will report this news and then the mainstream media would cover it you would right. see it in time magazine so 10 years ago in 2011 well that's more than 10 years ago when coral was at an all-time low they used this data set uh, to predict that there would be a decline to 5 to 10% by 2022. Here's media coverage, courtesy of author and academic Bjorn Lundberg. Uh, it shows right here, right? 27 year decline of coral reef covered based on these averages, right? And furthermore, they went on to predict that by 2022, there would be a five per that the reef would decline to just 5 to 10% of what it normally is. Well, it is 2022, that didn't happen. So we should get to talk about that too, right? So here are RIDS calculations showing the average over the last 30 or so years um, are up overall. Yeah, look at that chart. Like it's significantly higher than over the past you know, number of years when we've been hearing it's going, it's going, it's going, it's gone. Right. And now it's, it's, it's healthier than it's been in 30 years. So what's interesting is when you think about the de decline of the reef, you think, oh, humans, we're awful, we're parasitic, right? And it's actually, reefs are not that susceptible to human behavior. There's not a lot of, humans don't just have parties there, right? Reefs ebb and flow and they are extremely resilient. And the things that destruct the reef happen due to weather events and outbreaks of this crown of thorn starfish. And it's funny where my mind goes, because as soon as I hear, well, crown of thorn starfish must be invasive, probably a diver brought it, right? That's not actually true. They are native to that area. Or, or, the, uh, or, or the lionfish. Like I was, I'm a scuba diver. I'm a certified scuba diver and uh, was just diving recently. And, you know, again, lionfish are invasive in certain waters and certain, some of the you know, Caribbean waters um, and they want them out of there. But also you'll notice with the reefs, like, you know, after a big storm, you'll see pieces of coral washed up on, on the beaches and so forth. So after big thunderstorms, 
big weather events, that's when you see a lot of the destruction of coral, right? Yeah. Um, you'll see pieces of sea fans and other things like that. Um, and yes, when you go down in a reef and you see like, oh, there's a monster, there's a monster soda can float in there. Like I'll grab it. You will, you grab it. You put it in a sure. Sack that's and, an abomination. Right. But the reef can survive it. Yeah. A right? reef, a reef can survive an aluminum can. Uh, but I think that this data is amazing. I think what's to me more troubling about it though, is that the mainstream media, like if you go into a newsroom or you're at CNN or you're at uh, the New York times and you're walking in the newsroom, like, Hey, what story should we be working on today? You know, uh, chief and, uh, well, there's a news about the Great Barrier Reef is doing better than ever. Yeah, I'm not going to cover that story. How about if it was worse than ever, I would cover that story. Well, then my mind went to, because I'm so used to blaming us as a species, that, well, maybe the reef is destroyed because of climate change, uh, which is actually not true because reefs grow faster in warmer waters. So if the oceans, that doesn't, that's not to say that's good for the ecosystem in general, but for the reef, um, it is. Now, this is what caught my attention from Rid's report. He says, the data since 1986 shows that every region, every sector and most reefs have had occasionally periods of very low coral cover for one reason or another. This is entirely, entirely natural, but the media makes much of occasional setbacks to coral cover. But a measure of the health of an ecosystem is the ability to recover from a major stress. Frail systems will not recover. Robust systems recover well, just as healthy people recover, right? And so he says, this data shows that the Great Barrier Reef is a vibrant and healthy ecosystem. I want to skip to this last paragraph. He says, this data shows that the Great Barrier Reef is a robust system with rapidly fluctu fluctuating coral cover. We must expect that sometime in the future, a sequence of events will cause the coral cover to fall sharply, as we did in 2011. We must then remember that this is almost certainly natural and not allow the merchants of doom to depress the children right and so this relates to what the media is now calling climate anxiety and it exacerbates that and so why is that a problem well the media likes to tout these health indicators of the planet and are more likely to scare us but of course climate change of course it's a concern right but we don't focus on humans as any kind of agent of change about how we can adapt and how we can survive. And instead we're creating this anxiety inside our children, like our well, yeah, children. Because it plays right into the narrative about, uh, you know, this, you know, a green new deal funneling billions of dollars to these corporations who are just, you know, we're trying to take money away from these fossil fuel companies and that funneling to all of these cronies around the world and in, in Europe and in Washington. So we can push all of this new, this new green new deal agenda, right? So you get there by creating this anxiety, don't you? Right. And I mean, it, we saw the Guardian, right? For instance, the Guardian, as Bjorn Lumberg reports in his book, he talks about how in the Guardian newsroom, if you go into the Guardian in the UK, they will not allow you to print articles calling it climate change. It has to be called climate crisis now. It's a newsroom wide change on the language. You can't say climate change. You have to say climate crisis or climate carnage or whatever else, right. right? And I noticed that I am so conditioned by these media reports to think that, well, humans, we just mess up everything. It's totally our fault, right? Um, but actually, two summers ago, I picked up this book, Braiding Sweetgrass, by a woman who is an indigenous, uh, she's an indigenous woman, but she also is a botanist. And she studied sweetgrass and amazingly, sweet grasses do better in climates where there are humans. So, do, so does a lot of markers, um, the buffalo population, the same, right? A lot of things in nature actually do thrive because of humans. We are not just parasites and we can't allow the media to make us feel like that. We can absolutely do better in our conversation with the planet. We absolutely can live in a more natural way, but not if we see ourselves as doomed. Right. And we're doomed because we're being told and force fed this narrative from the Western media that we are doomed. So we can fit in certain like regulatory nuggets, right? Like nitrogen has to hit this level. We have to make sure we hit these ridiculous markers, 2% reduction in climate, in, in carbon emissions and all of these things that are virtually impossible to happen. Right? Which won't happen. It won't happen, but they tell us, and that's why this, there's this immediacy of it. We've got to hit this in 15 years or we're all dead. We're all dead in 15 years unless we can reduce carbon emissions by 2%, which is impossible. 
right? Yes. I mean, it's absolutely impossible. It's not going to happen. Yes. So um, I, I think that this is interesting. And I think that if we are going to have a rational discussion about climate change, we have to take all markers, not just the ones that scare us the most. Thus, this story.